How's it going, man? Sorry, Dirt. Well, things things escalated <laughs> real quick. So my plan was to film us putting the whole body on and doing the hood and doing the nose. And, well, I just kind of started, like, doing some things. And then Bray and Alan needed to bring, drop a couple things off, pick a couple things up. Well, they brought the great Big Sexy himself, Dustin Von Hagen. And uh, he does a lot of bodies, and he just kind of started going. And so... Dusty finished the nose. He'd uh, finish in the sides of the hood right now. And uh, yeah, we almost look like we got a complete race car. This old girl is looking good. We already had the hood made, just had to knock some holes and uh, get that. But yeah, Dusty made the centerpiece. He made the side of the hood there. This thing is almost ready to rock now. What are you doing right now, Dusty? Just notching, making sure everything. <coughs> and for the, the record, got the got the for the I record, got the swoop. for the record, I, I made Dusty remake this. This is the swoop. Yeah, dude. Let's see. Doesn't that not look better? Does that not look the better? Swoop. Go grab the other one. Okay, yeah, yeah. Let's take this to the internet. Good call. Let's let's see who's right. Fans, swoop or no not swoop? on a lot of other skyrockets. So this is the first one Dusty made. No swoop. So yes, yeah, it looks better. He's got you know, he got silver showing here. They're just it's just flat and just okay. And I'm like Dusty, we need the swoop. Give me one with swoop. Now look at that one with some swoop. Does that not look better? I like the swoop. Thank you. Yeah, what do you think? Yes. Swoop. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. So, what do you think? Comment. Swoop. No swoop. I think the swoop looks way better. But, yeah. Man, I can't believe it that the car actually looks like it's almost ready to run. Uh, I did not have this much motivation in myself today, but... Thank God for good friends, and it's amazing what uh, a couple of the right people and you can accomplish in the matter of an afternoon. And so we've, we've never featured good old Braden Allen here on our, uh, on our channel. He's uh, been lecturing me that I've never interviewed him. <laughs> uh, all I showed was uh, the, the AMA that we sold he bought leaving the garage and that's all we we showed so now here is your spotlight uh, yeah so uh i'm pretty excited to announce that i'm running the uh 2024 the dirt dueler i got for billy it's the old a mod we transferred it to a b mod and got everything turnkey got a couple motors for this year got backup got extra parts you know everything we need and uh just just excited for 2024 <laughs> So he was racing like this home built chassis. So convinced him to buy my dirt dueler because Adam, you guys seen the video, Adam and dirt dueler are freaking awesome when it comes to tech support. And I'm like, Braden, you need to buy this car, dude. Like this thing is got really good stuff on it. And Adam will help you as much as he possibly can. So no, super excited to see what you can do in that thing with, with Adam. Dusty, what's your plan? Sound like you downsized from earlier conversations. Yep, no more racing for us. We're just uh, playing on the sim rigs and RC cars, and that's about it. So, you, so your modified RC isn't classified as racing, or what? Yeah, and when that when those things flip over, we you just flip hear, them back over and we keep going. You didn't hear my question. What was that? You just said you guys are done racing. Yeah. And I said, so your your RC cars aren't classified oh. as racing. I guess they are. But okay. we're, we're done racing the big cars. Going to RC cars. They're a lot easier to work on. Like, yeah, well, they're you, a don't, lot. you don't need a big garage to do it and big trailers and tools. No, we had a 3,000 square foot shop and now everything for racing for me is congregated into the room that I share with my cats. So, if you uh, buy RC cars, put them in the room with your cats. That's <laughs> what I got off of that one. So... <laughs> Well, we're going to slap this side panel on, and then uh, these three have never been to Brewski's. So we are going to uh, give them an experience of a lifetime 
of the local tavern and the best pizza and burgers around. TJ, what are you doing? <laughs> I had an itchy nose. So hungry you're starting to eat your shirt. I thought he was eating his shirt. I was kind of confused there. No. Did you itch your nose? I itched my nose. Okay. All right, Mesodart, we're going to zip on this panel. Nothing too exciting. And then we are going to go eat some food. All right, we'll chat you guys later. And Yep. Don't forget, put the swoop in. <laughs>
Sammy and I are watching Harper Quinn. Well, I'm watching Harper Quinn. Sammy left to go to a wedding uh, expo. So yeah, Minnesota Dirt, if you did not know, Sammy and I got engaged uh, during Thanksgiving. I don't know if I mentioned that in the last video. So, so yeah, your boy's getting married. So I think she's thinking sometime next year. So whew, won't affect with this year's race season. But now she uh, gets to deal with the stressfulness of planning a wedding. I help a little bit, but probably not nearly as much as she wants me to. I told her, you, you just, you, you plan it. I'll, I'll, you tell me wh when and where and I'll, I'll be there, you know? So I feel like it's not asking too much. It's her idea. I keep trying to convince her just to go to the courthouse, but she's she don't she's not down for that. She she wants some big extravagant thing. So I said, good honey, you plan it. So Alright, well, we're gonna scrape a bunch of silicone. Nothing too exciting. And uh slap some silicone back on it and put it back on. That's the plan. Check you guys later. How's it going, Minnesota Dirt? Today is Monday. March 18th, uh, we got a special one here for you today. We are meeting with J-Rocks Auto Glass, uh, located here in Douglas, Minnesota. Uh, just spoke to John for a little bit, and uh, he's gonna give us a full tour and what all goes into replacing your car's windshield. I heard a little bit of it, and that piece of glass in the front is no longer just a piece of glass anymore. It ain't like the good old days when it's just a piece of glass. Now there's all kinds of craziness going into it. Um, so John here is going to show us and teach us about the craziness involves now what has to be done to replace your windshield. So this is John here. John, how long have you uh, J-Rock been in business? Uh, for 15 years we've been in business. I've been doing it myself for 25 years. 25 years. And... Uh, from a little bit that I do know about replacing your windshield, it is crazy on where it is today compared to 25 years ago. I would say probably even 10 years ago, but yes. Um, a lot of new features on the vehicle are safety features that help you, assist you to drive. Um, and those features are mounted on the windshield for the most part. And actually, um, 2024 going forward here, every vehicle has to have a forward facing camera on it or it can't get a five star crash rating. Oh wow. Yeah, so every vehicle will need to have a calibration anytime a windshield's replaced because once you remove that camera, when you're putting it back on, you need to know that it's in the correct position. So um, yes, there's not just changing a window, it's now doing the calibrations after. Well, awesome. So I'm going to flip the camera around and uh, John's going to show us around here. Alrighty. All right. So we got three of us that come here in the morning. This is where our glass gets delivered. We do all our prep work for them. Um, I had a window sitting out here that type of um, ADAS features we're calling it, the forward facing camera. This is one that we have removed and the camera's still on here. We have to replace it. This will need a calibration afterwards because we need to know that it's in the correct spot when it gets put back in there. So it doesn't matter if it hasn't been taken off, hasn't been plugged, whatever, you're moving the camera and putting it back on there, you gotta recalibrate it. So, so what's involved in all the prep work? So I assume when you get a windshield, it's gonna be just bare, nothing yep. on it, you right? See these ones right here, these are one of our groups right here. They come in, best they can so that they don't get scratched or dinged, but what we do is take all that plastic off. Um, we'll actually use a scuff pad. This is an old one, but we scuff all the old window down with a spray um, just to get any of the oils from fingers or anything from shipping come off. Then we'll put it in our van, do the same thing when we get there, and then we put a primer on it, the window, and this really grabs to the glue that we put on there. They work completely together. This right here also, if while you're taking it out, it's another primer, you can put it on the body of the vehicle, prevents any rust if you did have a little ding or something. So you're doing this stuff mobily. We can do, 
that time is changing because of the calibration. Yeah, that's kind of what I figured. Yes. So anything as of right now, a pretty good way to say it would be domestic vehicles. We can plug a scan tool in it and then we just basically tell the vehicle, hey, you got a new windshield in it. We need to learn our surroundings. Take that vehicle out and it sees the new stuff around it. It says, okay, now I see where we're at. We're good to go 100%. So <clears throat> that's how they do it. But what I'll show you here, anytime you have that camera and it's on a foreign vehicle for the most part, it's called a static calibration. And what that takes is this machine right here. So when that camera is coming off of the vehicle, we need to set this up at the correct distance from that camera, the correct height, this is the pitch and the yaw. Everything's done via the computer. All we do is move this around into place and it goes from orange to green. We know it's in the right spot. We adjust stuff a little bit. These cameras right here on both sides are seeing those little targets on the bottom. So it knows exactly how that vehicle's sitting. Okay, well, the targets on the wheels there. Yes. See if I can zoom in on them. Boom, right there's a target. So now it knows that it's flat, it's in the right position, we'll hit a button, it'll raise to the correct level. We tell the car it's time to learn the um, new calibration. And some of them are just this one, you have to do three of them, but you follow everything right on the, um, on the scan tool. And this is the third, piece of equipment that we've had and it's the best one out there because not only can we do this but we go above and beyond and do stuff for body shops and dealerships anytime there's collisions that adaptive cruise control or the blind spot monitoring 360 cameras all of that stuff has to be recalibrated afterwards um, most anytime they have a collision and so and if i heard right you do quite a bit with our other sponsor rossi auto collision yes yep not only do their glass work, but um, we're beginning to get in there and do a lot of this calibration work, you know. It's a safety system that has to be done, and it gets their liability off of it and puts it on us, and we know for sure that it's done correctly with this, or it won't allow us to do it. So, like you just said, it's crazy how much everything changed in the last 10 years. If 10 years ago you could be talking to your current self, do you think 10 years ago you ever would have believed that we'd be this technological here for a windshield? I would say <laughs> uh, 10 years ago, I saw it coming. 20 years ago when I started, absolutely not. But when we saw it coming, we started clear sight calibrations to do the calibration work above and beyond J Rocks. And that's been open for eight years. And I would say yes, in the last 10 years, <laughs> it's here. And all the technology is very well now. They're just tweaking it a little bit, so. Yeah, because uh, Minnesota Dirt, you guys have seen Charlie's restoring that 64 Ford. Nothing like what's going on here. That's a simple, real glass. And it's, I, I don't know, it's, it's shocked. I was shocked to find out that your windshield just isn't a piece of glass like everyone thinks it is, that there's so much more involved, and that's crazy. Well, and... Yes, that's the new stuff, but we just did an 85 G-Series van out here. Mm -hmm. and we had a gentleman that worked for us that has worked 11 years and has never done those things. So there's just not that experience out there anymore, especially with old cars and farm machinery and stuff like that. Nonstop, we get calls from customers saying different glass companies had said, no, nah, we're not doing that, but J-Rocks will take mm -hmm. care of it. So, we like to think of our company as, I mean, between me, Peter, and Devin, we have 65 years of experience, and we can, I think, service, yeah. Yeah, Charlie, uh, I think last year, uh, I think Charlie, he also did a video about it. Uh, one of your guys came out there and replaced the windshield in his uh, 97 Ford he had, and he said it was, the guy was super new what he was doing, super experienced, re extremely ex respectful and nice, and was able to Wing boom, knocked it out. It looked gorgeous. He had no leaks on the end of the day. It was beautiful. So you guys definitely do great work. Yeah, I, I am very blessed to have the people around me that I do. I trust them all very much. And um, I don't think there's anything that we can't do, you know, mm -hmm. or figure out 
a way to help you in some way, you know? No, that's awesome. Yeah, so what's, what's this thing though? So this here <clears throat> is a cone for calibrating radars, like your adaptive cruise control that'll slow down and speed up for you. Okay. In most vehicles, it's hidden behind the emblem right here. Okay. This vehicle has none of that, but... Um, so we again plug our scan tool in there and tell this system, we need to know that you're not pointed up or pointed down because if it got hit here, mm -hmm. we need to know that. So we actually have a, di a digital, um, yes, <laughs> that we put on there and can tell if it's this way or this way and we just crank it so that it's level. Um, it shoots out here, make sure you're at a certain distance, and if it shoots back, it knows that it's in the correct position again. Then we know that while this thing's driving, whichever spot they put on their system, they know that it's going to uh, stop at the correct distance. So that's simulating the car bumper in front of you. Correct. <laughs> yeah. And the radar shooting off and coming back, and if it's at the correct distance again, it will not allow you to do it. Um, there's if you if it's not in the correct position. Mm -hmm. And the same thing goes for like long spot monitoring in the back when the, you can see the vehicles coming up from you. This just needs to be placed at a certain position and aim it at that sensor. You do some measurements and the same thing happens. A lot of times in car accidents, those sensors will be tweaked this way and you can't get a reading. We'll actually have to go back to the body shop. They need to do some adjustments so that we can get it done correctly. So. A lot of new technology, yeah. but we have the best system to do it that's out there, I think. So you can't just slap a bumper on a car anymore? Not even close. <laughs> <laughs> oh, have times have changed. <laughs> wow, this is a lot. I never would have uh, expected to see all this stuff nowadays. It's crazy. It's crazy what they can do with technology. It is, but they're amazing features. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of people, when they first came out, oh, I hate that my car is driving for me, but... You know, how many people are here that have saved me so many times, you know, it slows for you or steers you back in. Yeah. Um, they're safety features and they're very good safety features. Yeah, no, absolutely. So what we're here to do to guarantee that they're working properly at the correct distances. And that's what this machine and the action of recalibration is doing, is making sure they're in the correct spots. Yeah, no, that's awesome. That's cool. Anything else we can see, sir? Yeah, so we finished this building about a year ago and got an office in here. Um, it's a lot easier to work from here than in a old garage. So got the two different bathrooms in here and a spot for people to sit. Um, like I said, when you do those static calibrations and they do gotta come here, at least there's a comfortable spot, spot. to sit and wait. Takes about an hour and a half tops to do it from start to finish and have you out the door. So. Oh, I love that sign. That is super cool, all backlit like that. That's cool. There's a gentleman down the road that we did some work for and I saw him doing stuff like that. So I said, hey, what do you think about this? And he whipped it up. It yeah, no, nice. that's, that's super cool. Nice, nice office piece there. Well, beautiful. Well, guys, you just got to see the whole behind the scenes here at J-Rocks Auto Glass. Thank you, John, very much for showing us. And uh, we'll check in with you guys back at the shop. Good morning, Minnesota Dirt. 6.30 in the morning. My trailer's gone. My garage lights are on. What's going on here? So dirt. Gigi, what are you doing at 6 30 in the morning? Um I wasn't gonna load a race car, but the car's in the way. Load up the race car. Why are you loading up the race car, TJ? We gotta go get it scaled and set up. So our plan is today. We got uh, a scale session with Jim Chisholm. Hmm. Did you do break the battery charger? It's broken. The battery or the charger? Charger. 
Good job. So, we're gonna go down to Osage, Iowa. Get the car scaled, set up. You guys I haven't seen the car in a while, but you ready? Here it is. Ta-da! Looking pretty good. <clears throat> we took the quarter panels off it for this trip because I don't have the wheel wheels cut out yet. So, didn't want them flap. And so, we didn't have any strapping down, so they were flopping and blah, blah, blah. And so, we'll just pop those on later. But, <clears throat> she's looking pretty good. And I think we're leaving the mill finish rough. So, we're doing the whole mill life. So, all right, guys. Well, I need to get my car moved. And we're gonna get this thing loaded up. Whoa, man. I wanted to sleep in today. We'll get this thing loaded up and we'll check in with you. Oh, hey, look it. I got a fish now. I got a fish. Now we got the, we had the deer, got the fish, and now we're gonna get the eagle. Yeah, it's pretty neat. All right, guys, we're all loaded up. Dude, I did some upgrades to the trailer, my dad and I. The setup looks, we look pretty professional. Check this out. Look at the setup. <clears throat> All professional looking with this badass car, but we tinned out the rest of the box. So now up here I can throw totes, all kinds of stuff, and then the tires that go across to so keep her, uh, Keep it locked in. <clears throat> Light there for the, cause the toolbox is right there. But we tinned her all up. Some fancy lights across the top. <clears throat> look at that setup. We actually look like serious dirt racers now. Taking TJ's truck to Iowa, cause old Betty White, she's a little bit of a rough drive for that long. All right, guys, well, we're getting the truck, stop at the gas station. We'll check in with you and get to uh, Iowa. We'll see y'all later. Well, hi, Minnesota Dirt. Today is um, Saturday, March 23rd, Charlie's birthday. So uh, everybody make sure you get on Facebook, social medias, whatever, and um, let Charlie know that we're all thinking about him and uh, that he's having a happy birthday. So today I'm out at Billy's shop. Um, you notice there's a big empty spot here. I'm sure um, Billy will uh, will uh, t tell you why. I'm sure on his video they'll you'll see why there's an empty spot here. But Billy's out um, getting some final touches put on on his car. So I'm here working on Charlie's rig. Um, Charlie's is, uh, you know, it looks like it's a long way off, but it uh, it uh, isn't really that 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 far off. We're putting together his uh, MB Custom. Obviously, Billy's in charge of the suspension and all the uh, all the putting all the new billet chicory on there. I'd like to thank uh, Chad out at Weir's Machine. Um, gives us a really um, takes care of us really well out there. Um, well, takes care of Charlie really well. Obviously, he takes care of Billy really well, but he also uh, takes care of Charlie and um, makes sure we have the best parts on the car. Um, Billy probably has showed this on his channel, but here's the brand new Weir slider um, with the new slider lock nut, which is uh, really, really cool. Um, it keeps you from having to get down there with those two big wrenches and all that. Um, there's the new style puck chain limiter that uh, we're going to be running. Um, so, of course, thanks to Chad and the boys over at Weir's and Billy, um, we uh, always run the best of, uh, of uh, Weir's machine. So we have this great big cart here, all full of parts that um, some of these will go on here. Some of them are from other cars. Um, we did uh, last weekend, I've worked on the nose, so I got the new nose put on it. Um, we're going to run a lot of the same panels as that came on the car. 
Um, the car was in really good shape as far as the body and stuff. And then also it came with another body, a white body. And that's what Charlie wants to run this beginning of this year. We're going to do white body, white sails, all that. But, uh, you know, so it's, it's coming along. It looks, looks like it's got a long ways to go, but you'd be surprised what we can get done in a couple weekends. Test and tune is, I think, the 13th of April. So the plan is, is to have it out there so Billy can run it and, uh, you know, hot lap it a few times, at least, you know, knock the, you know, make sure everything is, you know, going the right direction and all that fun stuff. So when Charlie does get home, um, we suspect to see him around April, I'm sorry, around July, rather. Um, he should be able to jump in it and just go. But anyway, the big thing we were waiting on is the motor. There it is. So that's our faithful 420. The one that if you've looked at the old, uh, some of our old videos, this is the one that Charlie, Charlie's run this motor for the last couple, three, four years. Um, he's got a couple wins with this motor. He's got the USMTS heat win with this motor. Um, so it's it's been freshened a bunch, but it's still a very sturdy a foundation. Um, it's a 420 spec heads. And uh, so this is the one in a few videos ago, we saw the uh, where Charlie broke or during that uh, during that um, a red flag at the Jamboree a couple years ago, um, the car just shut off and turned out it broke a cam. So this is the motor that had the broke cam. So we took it over to Flying J and uh, he freshened it up for us, put a new cam in it, dynoed it, and uh, thing runs great. So here it is. I'm gonna clean her up a little bit, throw a coat of paint on it, make it look pretty. And then the plan is by the end of today, it's in here. How's it going guys? We're gonna end the video right there. Starting to get way too long on length. A lot going on here. I have a lot of footage. I've been meaning to post videos, but I haven't. And I'm not gonna, it's gonna be an hour if I just keep going. So we're gonna break it off right here. Um, the next video we'll have uh, some Jim Chisholm talk into it. Might just do a little video for that. Uh, there was background music playing that I didn't think about. So I'm pretty sure that video is going to get flagged. And I don't want to post that flag part in our videos because then, yeah, we get in trouble. So I might just post that as a small snippet, not monetize it. So then you guys get to hear what Jim has to say and we don't get in trouble. So I'll probably just post like a four or five minute video um, just a little bit from down there. Um, but yeah, that will wrap up this video. I will have another video probably posted in the next day as well. Because like I said, we got a lot of footage. Um, this Saturday, so that would be April 6th. 6th will be the Deer Creek Car Show. Come on down, support the local racetrack, and support these local racers that have been busting their tail all winter long to get these cars ready for the car show and ready for the 24th season. Thank you for everyone for watching, and hopefully we'll see you at the car show. See you guys.